Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch did not. The Grinch was a person, sour and green, who sat on his mountain, angry and mean. He looked down on Who's who sang, played, and laughed, but the truth was his life was filled with problems as large as an aircraft. Now, you may have heard his story, he's famous after all, but you may not have heard how he dealt with this big emotional wall. We'll figure out today why the Grinch sat with his dog all alone, then discover how he left with cheer and accomplished this big milestone. I'll put on my Santa hat to talk about this Grinch who was once evil. Hello, I'm Isaac from Watson Videos, where we discuss fun topics for fun people. To spread a little magic this season in my dormitory, let's discuss the Grinch's full story. By the way, if you'd like to learn more about The Grinch after the video, I've provided all the links to the original storybook, the movies, and the resources I used in the description. The Grinch's life began in a place where everyone was giddy, happy, and cheerful, and the people were ready to play, laugh, and sing. He grew up in Whoville. Now, although The Grinch may have once lived in Whoville, for the longest time he didn't have that same type of joyous attitude, but it's not because The Grinch was born with darkness in his soul. It's not like he just always wanted others to suffer. He didn't spend his whole life wanting the world to be crushed under his green, hairy feet. The truth was more complicated than that. In 1982's The Grinch Grinches the Cat in the Hat, we learn at some point early in the Grinch's childhood, he lost his parents, and for the rest of his life, he struggled without their presence, especially living without his beloved mother. Even as an adult, decades after her passing, he would still remember and imagine her comforting him. There, son. Everything's going to be all right. Without his father or the mother he cherished, he grew to feel alone, surrounded by individuals who didn't understand him. In 2018's The Grinch, we discover the Grinch was left on his own in an orphanage, forced to watch over the town as they celebrated their lives in the holidays, making him feel abandoned and distant from his people. And after years of watching their fortune while he simply desired love, he eventually turned bitter over their traditions. Specifically, he learned to despise Christmas. In 2000's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, it suggests after the Grinch's birth on a special night, he fell into the lives of Clarnella and Rose Who. It was Christmas Eve, and a strange wind blew that night. That night's odd wind, which I should tell you would come again, brought the Grinch to these women who would adopt the poor child. They adored their son. He was a wonderful, oh, whatever he was. But the Grinch struggled to integrate into Who culture. He was a sadistic child with some odd humor and a unique look, leading to Who's making fun of the boy. Although the Grinch was a strange enigma, he held a large capacity for compassion and love and was willing to apply his ingenuity and brilliance to show it when he was eight years old for a Christmas party. On the day of the party, his moment was ruined for his bully, Augustus May, who mocked him along with his class and teacher. The Grinch lost his temper, trashed the classroom, and fled the town. Christmas felt like nothing special to the Grinch. It seemed like another day for the Who's to enjoy their lavish and abundant Who lives. I hate Christmas! I hate it! And that was the last time we ever saw them. The very last time. The Grinch learned to hate Christmas in his childhood, but we can't be for sure the exact explanation for no one really knows. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Oh, please don't ask why, no one quite knows the reason. Maybe his shoes were too tight, or his head wasn't screwed on just right, but I don't think those were the reasons. Although there were many explanations on how the Grinch could become so Grinchy, and I'm sure there will be many more, what we have seen as a constant between all of his origin stories is that he has a complicated early life where he often felt alone, worthless, and tormented. These horrible feelings led him to some dark ramifications in his life. After all this pain, his empathy lowered, his anger grew, and his heart reduced in size. I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. With his shrunken heart within his chest, the Grinch left Whoville behind, retreating to the peak of Mount Crumpet to live in isolation. It was on that mountain where the Grinch grew into the hairy, pot-bellied, angry, cynical, and sometimes characterized as spazzy character we know him as, suffering all the while on his own, which was only going to get worse. One o'clock, wallow in self-pity, 
430, stare into the abyss. As the Grinch's hate grew, his mind began to fall apart, leading him into a situation where it was becoming more and more difficult for him to get out of his despair. We see in The Grinch Grinch is the Cat in the Hat, over time, the Grinch developed an alter ego who keeps him from becoming nice. He remained cemented in who he is, for he follows his own Grinch code. I think the time has come for thee to repeat the Grinch's oath with me. Our Grinch is unhelpful, unfriendly, unkind, with ungracious thoughts in an unhealthy mind. The Grinch is supposed to not be cheerful, kind, or clean. Instead, he is supposed to be frightfully mean. His mouth is not meant to smile, his eyes are meant to be shifty, and his fingers are supposed to be thrifty. And with all of these characteristics in mind, he knew what he was. I'm a Grinch! Although the Grinch had transformed into a malicious and nasty fiend, he would make a friend on Mount Crumpet. In the storybook, the Grinch meets his Max. One day, when the Grinch had a very bad itch that just wouldn't go away, he comes across a dog named Max, who wanted to play. Now, the Grinch tries to explain he doesn't like kids, money, fun, being nice, rides, and kicks with pink inside, but Max doesn't listen. When the Grinch throws a stick down a hole in hopes of getting rid of the dog, Max just comes back and scratches the Grinch's itch for him. Although this gesture may seem small, it meant a lot to the Grinch, so he softens up a little on Max and agrees to be friends. For the next few decades, the Grinch and Max cause quite a bit of chaos in Whoville. In the Grinch's original appearance in the 1955 story The Hubub and the Grinch, we learn how the Grinch is a manipulative and greedy character who enjoys tricking Hububs into buying worthless items like strings. 1996's The Wobblest World of Dr. Seuss depicts the Grinch as a terrorizing figure for the other Dr. Seuss characters. In his film appearances, we see the Grinch enjoys causing misfortune to citizens of Whoville by destroying their stuff and messing up the mail and making pickle jars just disgusting. He is always looking for an opportunity to torment the Who's, and on Halloween is when he truly goes all out. In the 1977 animated short titled Halloween is Grinch Night, we learn after a particular cold wind blows into Whoville called Sour Sweet Wind, the Grinch comes down to openly wreak havoc on the town. Because this particular wind is tied with the Grinch, I think it is possible this Sour Sweet Wind was the same type of gust that brought the Grinch into Whoville, but that is just my idea. Let me know below if you agree with these thoughts in the comments. On the particular night we see in the short, little Yukurai is able to face the Grinch's horrifying tricks and stops him from messing up Whoville, but the Grinch knows he'll get another chance. That wind will be coming back someday. I'll be coming back someday. Although the Grinch was able to befriend Max, for many years, it seemed he only fell into further inner torment and escalated his tricks on the Who's. He seems like someone without a heart, but one individual gets through to him. In The Grinch Grinches the Cat in the Hat, the Grinch wakes up chipper, but his alter ego drags him down, so when he crashes his car with the Cat in the Hat, the Grinch is determined to ruin his day. The Green Hairy Beast reveals his resourcefulness and ingenuity, for he messes with the cat in the hat with an acoustical anti-audio bleeper and molds reality with a dark house, leading to the cat to go crazy from his tricks. The cat in the hat struggles to figure out how to end the torment and get through to the Grinch, but then he realizes what he must do. He sings about the Grinch's mother. Remember your sweet mother's eyes. She adored you. The Grinch ends his fun with the cat in the hat, showing there is the possibility to get through to him after so many years of pain, suffering, and cruel behavior, but one more large event had to occur for his heart to grow again. Although the Grinch messed with the Who's all year long, the Grinch despised one day more than them all, Christmas. The Christmas season was tied to harsh realities of his past, and now the Grinch only saw the day as filled with needless things and things, feasting and loud noises that were obnoxious and deafening. After decades of suffering through the day, he couldn't stand it any longer. Why, for 53 years I put up with it now. I must stop Christmas from coming. 
How? With the help of Max, the Grinch disguises himself as Santa Claus, breaks into all the Who's' homes, and steals all of the items that he thinks could bring them Christmas joy. He fills his sleigh all the way up and takes his sleigh to the very peak of Mount Crumpet, awaiting his victory. But to his surprise, even without all of their decorations, packages, presents, and bags, the Who's brought Christmas to come all the same. At first, he couldn't comprehend what was happening, but soon he realized that Christmas may have been something more profound than he had initially imagined. Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. The Grinch realizes there's a deeper meaning to the holiday. Christmas spirit does not come about by the thing someone has. It derives from the people that are around them. The Who's weren't all selfish, materialistic, and cruel. They were people who believed in seeing through their negative situation to create holiday spirit. The Grinch may have been alone for a long time and was treated poorly at points in his life, but he realized those people at the bottom of his mountain weren't all bad and maybe, just maybe, they could even make him happy. With his realization, his heart grows three times that day. The Grinch saves all of the Who's' presents and returns them to the Who girls and boys. For his honesty and care, for the first time in forever, the Grinch was welcomed to the Who's' Christmas celebration. In addition to being welcomed into the Who community again, in 2000's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the Grinch's love, Martha May, decides to spend her life with the Grinch. And in the Seussical, we learn the Grinch goes on to direct the yearly Christmas pageant for years to come. The Grinch was raised amongst the Who's, but his loneliness without his parents and the bullying he was given brought on the Blues. Life was hard as an odd child, so the Grinch became absolutely wild. He scorned, tricked, and hurt Who's all across town, saddening all those around. The Grinch culminated his efforts on the night of Christmas Eve, but stealing Christmas could not be achieved. Christmas is something that cannot be hijacked, but the Christmas spirit will come as long as everyone is around to be exact. The Grinch learned a lesson in that year that he must surround himself with others to obtain his Christmas cheer. So now it's time for the question of the day, sponsored by my patrons. To become a patron yourself, check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash whatsovideos. What species do you think the Grinch is? Is the Grinch just a Grinch? Or maybe if everyone is a who, he is a what? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section along with any other ideas you have for future videos. If you enjoyed discussing the Grinch, then click that like button. And if you're interested in staying up to date with more magical Christmas videos, then click that subscribe button and please follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you'd like to see more lots of videos, then check out some awesome pics over here. And as always, thanks for watching and have a magical day.